Hey guys, what's going on? So it's been a while since I've done a laser video, as you guys know. Uh, I got bored last night <laughs> and made a laser out of a battery, I'm sorry, out of a soap carrier. Most people make them out of Altoids cans, but anyways, I had a whole bunch of spare parts laying around, some battery carriers, switches, a whole bunch of these 532 modules. Uh, this is actually a very tricky build because these wires that are attached to the actual switch, because this is a 10 amp switch, which I'm never going to use that much power, but this is a 10, 10 amp rated switch. The wires are very, very thick, so they don't bend very easily. So it's very hard to keep this thing from, I had to keep it, I had to glue it a specific way so it wouldn't put any stress on the spring here uh, because the spring is soldered to the actual driver and who knows how good they soldered it. I mean, these things did come from China and they're very cheap, so who knows. Um, it has the battery carrier, there's the module, got the IR diode in here, and then the crystal inside there also and the optics up front. Now, you may be wondering why this battery is actually backwards. The spring is here and the positive plate is here. So this is negative, this is positive. But I accidentally wired it wrong. So I had to, so instead of tearing the laser completely apart and rebuilding it, I basically just flipped the battery around and it works the exact same way. So, and getting this, um, because as you guys know, this is a case positive diode thanks to the, or case, not a uh, case positive laser thanks to the IR diode. Whoops. Uh, it's very tricky to actually, um, get this thing connected because solder doesn't really stick to this thing very easily so I had to get creative and luckily the actual uh, IR diode where the crystal sits actually unscrews where the optics pull off so I just put the wire in between there uh, where the threads are and just close it like that then of course there you have the driver kind of zener diode and you have the potentiometer there uh, I adjusted it just a little bit you don't want to push these things too hard because obviously the IR diode cannot really handle that much power these things are cheap um, but <laughs> yeah, but all in all, it works pretty cool. Um, I got to set to about 30, maybe 40 milliwatts. You don't want to push it too much further than that. Cause I really just don't know how hard this thing can be pushed. I may buy a 100 milliwatt 532 and maybe bump it up to 120. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so we'll close this thing up and turn it on. So when I first turned it on, it was actually very dim. Um, I actually had had adjusted it to where it was sitting at about 30, maybe 40 milliwatts. But for some strange reason, uh, the threshold current where it was placed at, this thing wasn't actually turning on. It was very, very dim. So I was probably under the, the uh, under the threshold current, and as you guys can see. And believe it or not, at only 30 to 40 milliwatts, this driver's already getting pretty warm, so I need to shut it off. But yeah, that's basically what it looks like. <laughs> that's literally the stupidest thing I've ever done. But why not? Turn this thing off and open it again. I'll probably end up building another laser out of something stupid like this in the future, but but it's pretty simple. Uh, obviously used um, hot glue there because <laughs> I need to keep these wires from moving around too much. Uh, this was a little tricky. I accidentally um, had put this all in place before I actually glued down the module itself. So the module was just kind of hanging there. And I didn't want to pick the module up because I didn't want to put any added stress on the spring back there. So I just kind of stuck some, poured some hot glue underneath there and it works, stays. So, but yeah, that's basically my nice little 532 soap carrier laser. <laughs> That's so dumb. I'm actually using no fog. This is just pure beam. I'm just kidding. Fog machine behind me. Very cool.